Have you ever heard of the legendary Kaiser Soze from Usual Suspects? Well, it turns out there's a real-life criminal mastermind who might have been more evil than Kaiser. Keep watching this video to learn more about one of history's most ferocious criminals, Reduan Tagi. Tagi's name hit the public in late 2015, but this wasn't the beginning of his criminal antics. He had operated completely in the shadows, moving drugs, weapons, and killing enemies in street mafia styles. But who is Ridwan Tagi? Why is he regarded as Netherlands' most dangerous man? Keep watching to find out. In this video, we will take a look at Ridu Antagi's life of crime, arrest, and a prison sentence riddled with rumors of escape. Let's dive right in. Tagi was born in 1977 in a small Dutch city. He grew under the harshest conditions, understanding crime way before he could even travel on his own. It is widely believed that Tagi got his first shot at the life of crime when he began smuggling hashish from Morocco to Europe through a route his grandfather had discovered. However, this claim has since been debunked by his lawyers, who claim Ridouin's grandfather was a respected mayor. While nobody knows for sure how Tagi got thrown into a life of crime, one thing is certain. This Moroccan Dutch drug lord enjoyed being such a dangerous and mysterious figure. Before the world heard about Tagi in 2015, this man had already filled Europe with drugs and dead bodies, and his name sent shivers in the crime underworld. Even though the authorities had got a whiff of his name before this time in relation to a series of organized hits around the Netherlands. Unfortunately, there was no evidence to tie him to these cases. However, this put him on the radar of the police. But this wasn't the first time the authorities heard his name. Way back in 2009, the police were actively keeping tabs on the criminal until he mysteriously disappeared without a trace. For years, the police searched, but nothing came up. It is generally believed that during these years, he lived with a different identity in Dubai or Mexico and maintained an extremely low profile. But Tagi is not one for low profiles. It didn't take long before his drugs, cocaine, showed up on the radar again, and authorities were able to trace this to Panama and Morocco, and also its eventual entry into Europe. Closely monitoring Tagi showed the police the very evil side of this criminal. In 2013, the police got word from an informant that Tagi had killed his own relative over a drug shipment argument. This informant further confessed that by telling the police this, he had risked his life and that of his family. He also mentioned that Tagi had once told him, quote, he who talks goes, and everyone around him goes to sleep, quote. This suggested that betrayers would not only be killed, their entire family and friends network would also suffer for their misdeeds against him. Unfortunately, just as the informant feared, his brother was shot and killed by an assassin six days later. Even though the assassin was arrested shortly, the police still couldn't link the murder to Tagi. Also, the police found information that linked Tagi to the murder of Samir Irigib, a man killed in 2016 in front of his daughter. SMS texts showed that Tagi considered Irigib a snitch, who he dealt with the best way he could. However, informants weren't the only people Tagi attacked during his reign of terror. He attacked media outlets that published stories on him, and also his enemies who dared cross him. Dutch authorities till this day still believe that he was responsible for the attacks on Panorama, a weekly magazine, and De Telegraaf, a newspaper in the Netherlands. This is because the attacks came right after both publishing houses published stories on his activities and potential involvement in criminal deals. Even though many refer to Tagi as a calculated and careful murderer, his hits haven't been short of errors. For example, in 2017, Tagi's assassins murdered the wrong man in Utrecht, the Netherlands. Well, another similar incident happened in Marrakech, Morocco. It is believed that both men bore an awful resemblance to the actual murder targets. Unfortunately for Tagi and his brothers, who were also a part of his crime syndicate, the victim in Morocco was the son of a judge. This resulted in a series of investigations and torture, which eventually implicated Tagi and his brothers. Even though his brothers were arrested, Tagi remained a fugitive, traveling the world under a fake identity, and as expected, he continued his life of crime, killing his enemies and moving hard drugs through his secret routes. With his brothers in prison, Tagi had to do something to protect himself. This became even more important when a witness came forward against Tagi. 
It was at this point that Tagi became more ruthless, ordering the killing of Dirk Viersum, a Dutch lawyer who worked for the witness against Tagi. But on December 16, 2019, Tagi's nemesis finally arrived. While he peacefully slept in his Dubai villa, authorities broke in and placed him under arrest. They heaved a sigh of relief, happy that the criminal mastermind was now in their hands. But Tagi had just one final trick up his sleeves, a dramatic escape. In prison, the Mafia boss planned to escape with the help of his lawyer, even planning the use of a helicopter. However, this escape plan was foiled and the criminal is now in solitary confinement, where soldiers have been drafted to watch him 24-7. With Tagi and his brothers in prison, this might be the end of his terror as we know it. But with the recent killing of Abraham Buzu, a key witness in his case, Tagi might still be a threat to the Dutch and Moroccan authorities. Did he order the death of this man from prison? Or is there somebody else in his steed growing through the ranks and doing the dirty job? Tell us what you think in the comments section. Thanks for watching.